welcome back to Yin and Young, the podcast. It's episode 29. Uh, the last episode you found us, I was in Korea with uh, our good friend Tao Yu. And uh, now for this episode, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a recap of some of my travels, catch up with Daniel, see how, how his holidays were doing. And uh, yeah, I guess the focus of this this one is I, I, I do have some stories from Taiwan and Korea that I want to share. Um, and uh, yeah, so, um, so I guess we can get into that. Uh, anything on your end, Dan? Nope, not... Uh, no, I always say no, but uh, <laughs> I can't think of anything off the top of my head other than watching screeners and movies and stuff. Okay, yeah, we can have a... Um, uh, we can do a cinema section. Uh, I do have some movies I do want to talk about to see if you've seen. Um, you want to start with that? That's like an easy one, I guess. Yeah. yeah let's do that. Okay. So we'll do a, uh, well, should we call it Cinema Corner? Sure. Yeah. Cinema Corner. Yay. Yay. Um, let's see. Okay. Well, I guess it has to be, well, of course, we can talk about The Last Jedi. Um we could well let's queue it up. Okay, we, like we could do last the last Jedi. What else is what else is good for you? What else have you watched that you want to talk about? Anything any other movies really uh hit home for you? Dan? Hello? Sorry, sorry. I really like Blade Runner. Okay, we could <laughs> also do Blade Runner, yeah. Yeah. And uh did you watch that movie? Yeah, I did. Both of those, yeah. Okay, and then, and then the other ones that have been all independent movies. I don't, I don't know. Have you seen like a Lady Bird, Florida Project, or Three Billboards? I saw Lady Bird, so we can talk. So why don't we start with those three? Okay. Yeah, The Last Jedi, Blade Runner, and Lady Bird. So okay, The Last Jedi, lo- very div- divisive film. Uh, for many people, bef- coming into that film, a good friend of mine was saying, "Ah, it kind of." It's it's a, a spit in the face uh, to like Star Wars fans, or he, uh, uh, he, or he said uh, actually it wasn't that he said like it's like yeah it's basically saying like fuck you to all the <laughs> previous Star Wars fans and it's like going off canon. When I watched it, that's what I was looking for. Are they? Is there anything that is kind of diverting from canon? Uh, I guess the Star Wars universe, which would be the books, the video games, such and such. Now, um, we, for Cinema Corner, we do, I do have to say this is going to be huge spoilers. We're not holding back anything. Uh, if you haven't seen the films The Last Jedi, Blade Runner 2049, or Lady Bird, just be warned that this is not a spoiler-friendly podcast. We're, we're going we're gonna to spoil everything because, I don't know, Dan, did you, I think it feels more honest when we spoil everything, I guess. Yeah. Or just talk about the major plot points, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm of the same opinion. I mean, by by the time we release this podcast, I think uh, there <laughs> will have been enough time. I'm sure a lot of people. Some there, are, there's going to always be someone who hasn't seen it, but you I know, don't think we should worry. Too yeah, much. yeah. But I, I do. I I would say to for those three films, all all uh, I would I would say yeah, I, worth watching, worth watching. So before we dig into it, uh, I would say to the listener, those three films are worth watching. Um, but anyways, okay. So, Last Jedi, okay, Luke Skywalker dies. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, so that, I guess that's outside of canon because I believe, I think in the, I, I, I'm not an expert, but I believe there is a whole nother arc to uh, Luke's story. There's like a dark Luke Skywalker. Anyways, so him, uh, him dying from the por- force projection that he did, kind of, uh, kind of anticlimactic, I would say. Um, I mean, okay. So, okay. So, I'll start with some of my grievances with the film. Okay. Um, grievance uh, number one I just mentioned was Luke passing away from that force projection. And I was just like, what? He's just going to die from that? Um, I mean, like all the other guys, Yoda, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, they all... Well, o- Yoda is like old, super old. So, he was dying. And Obi Wan Kenobi, he was actually struck down. So like, I just thought like, wow, I, I guess he really used up all his chi or all, all his uh, force 
for that projection and then he just died so a little bit taken aback from that um not a deal breaker but a little bit taken aback uh some of the jokes were okay i mean some of the tonal shifts in the film are a little bit off uh one tonal shift was like the beginning where it's like a telephone joke with the general hux and uh poe and the poe character in this film is you know fairly uh i would say i would not really that cool or not just uh kind of gets in the way of things which I think in a way is actually good. It kind of diverges from the post the previous films where if you're reckless and you're headstrong, that's how you get things done, right? But in this yeah. film it seems like you have to have a more you have to have a certain more temperament, a better temperament. Um, one last thing, I guess, before, because I know, Dan, you, you have a, a number of grievances. Uh, uh, the Rose Kiss with a... Uh, with uh, Finn and Rose, okay? Like, I was like, wait, where was this emotional connection coming from? Like, this was not really developed. Like, sure, they survived a lot of, you know, climatic things. And they've done research on this where, like, people who have been through traumatic ex events or experiences do bond. But uh, it wasn't shown emotionally in the film leading up to that kiss when they kissed each other. And I was just like, it was such an awkward kiss, too. Um so those are some three i have more but I'll, I'll list those three for now um comments question uh comments daniel yeah uh, it's, it's those are all valid i mean uh it's just a definitely a, a tonal shift my my friends i had talked to one friend about it and he just the telephone conversation whatever with general <laughs> hawks and poe he thought that was very um not typical of a star wars movie and to open with that is just really yeah 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 there was that part uh he doesn't really like and i agree with this that uh the the first order and the imperials never really joked around and there was never sarcasm so the general hux character seems completely out of place mm. especially at the end where kylo ren is uh, orders all the the Ad ats or whatever to attack or fire upon Luke Skywalker and General Hux goes oh did you was that enough or did you kill him did you, you get think? him yeah you yeah. think you got him and it's like uh, I, I heard some chuckles in the theater when he said that I chuckled myself but no I, I see where you're coming from yeah yeah so th that joking part my other th my all my grievances just have to do with like physics <laughs> The physics of things that are just like inconsistent i know everyone likes the holdo <coughs> maneuver where she jumps at light speed to cut apart the dreadnought and i thought it went against rogue one but it you know upon seeing that on netflix again uh, there were no ships that try to jump to light speed um or that jump to light speed and were uh prevented by the, the appearance of darth vader and his death star but there is a line that says from Grand Moff Tarkin that says that uh, Vader's going to take care of the fleet, and some of the ships actually did jump to light speed. But once all the other ships, or once the Star Destroyers appeared, that none of the ships jumped to light speed after that. Yeah, wait, do they have a technology that prevents them from jumping the light speed, or what? <clears throat> well, you know, all the uh, they mentioned it in A New Hope with Han Solo when he tells Luke Skywalker that they can't just jump into light speed, there's a lot of navigation, navigational co computations that have to be made by the computer uh -huh. to make sure that you don't like oh, reappear inside a star or whatever. Right, right. I guess... That's what, yeah. what droids are for. I guess uh, what was happening with, with uh, Laura Dern's character was that she don't give a fuck. She gonna, she's going to she's going to she's going to light speed to death, right? right. So if she's going to die, uh, I guess uh, maybe that's a different parameter that's not taken into account in the pre the previous Rogue One cuz they want to live. So Yeah. But I guess they die anyway, so why not take them out, I guess is yeah. Right. At least one person should sacrifice himself if everyone's going to like go down, get caught. Yeah, that becomes like prisoner's dilemma. Though, it's like who's gonna be that one person? Or <laughs> yeah. it does.
Yeah. But other than that, I mean, the other other like physics related issues I had with it, the bombers at the very beginning, they open the bomb bay doors. I don't know where the gravity is coming from that the, the bombs are going to go down necessarily. <laughs> and at the very end, where Rose intercepts Finn's speeder, I know we discussed this offline when we met up, but it, it still doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how that happens where the speeders are traveling in different directions at full speed and Rose was able to go back and intercept Finn's speeder at a 90 degree angle. It, uh, it just baffles me. Let's uh okay, let's 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 look at those. I I'll, I'll play devil's advocate for both of those. Okay. Okay. The bombers. <laughs> All right. So kind of remind, I I I haven't seen Pearl Harbor, but I heard in Pearl Harbor the bombs like fall straight down or something yeah and that it's like totally defies physics like because the bombers are flying straight right and then they and they drop the bomb it should there should be some horizontal movement anyways i knew, uh I, I something like, there's the physics in pearl harbor i heard were off as well but okay so uh so one thing in star wars that has always been okayed was that there's sound in space right right so that was that was just okay and, and my dad <laughs> you know he's not he's not really a movie buff but he is he was he does he was an engineer uh and he was okay with that he said yeah james that's fine it's it's a movie <laughs> yeah um so okay we're okay with that but uh gravity now maybe the bombs have some sort of I don't know, some sort of, it would have to have some sort of, each bomb would have to have some sort of gravitational uh, uh, technology in which allows them to attach to a, you know, bigger surface or go towards, a, go go to a certain direction. Because in in space, there's no down or up, right? It would just go, you know, right. whatever. Now, the thing is, uh, the ship has gravity that the bomber ship has gravity right because veronica yeah. no um the sister page page tico the, who plays veronica no the actress who plays um kelly uh kelly marie trans character rose tico's uh she falls and hurts herself right so okay yeah. one that ship does have gravity right yeah. um so the, you're cool with that right i just figure that yeah, we're going to have to like accept that there's going to be some gravity in space within the spaceships. Yeah, so she falls um and then <clears throat> and then the bombers are released. So there might be some sort of gravitational component to each bomb is is my devil's advocate uh thing. Um uh, who knows. But yeah, that's a big plot hole if there isn't, you know, and no one really thought about that. Um okay, Finn and uh, Rose, yeah, uh, big. I, I, I do have to agree. It's kind of ridiculous. Like he's going a straight. He's essentially going into a, a straight line most of the way. Yeah. And she does a hyperbolic arc, right? And yeah. if we know from like you know from martial arts, the you know the fastest punch is a straight punch, right? Cause, or jab, yeah. right? It's because it's a straight line going forward and back. You know now. There's certain times in a fight where you, it's good to use a hook and blah blah blah. They're, they're, where you throw the person off from different angles, but those are categorically, physically, going to be slower because they have to travel a longer distance, right? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> now for Ro, so the Finn's in the beam. So if Finn is in the beam, maybe the beam is slowing him down, maybe because he's kind of close to the beam. That's the only. <laughs> that's the only way I can consider. Or the other way, the other thing would be if Rose is like freaking jetting it faster than Finn in some way. Even though they, but the thing is, given that they both have the same kind of ship, and Finn is gunning it as much as he can, well, maybe his ship is slightly more damaged than her ship, and then her ship is able to still have some extra speed. That's. I think that's the only explanation. I guess. Yeah. Right. I the the thing about him traveling towards that battering ram as it's uh, powering up I just don't think that it's I don't know. I don't think that thing would be slowing it down. Mm. It might be. 
Who knows? Anyways, I think, uh, I, um, yeah, the physics thing, I think they're, they're fun. Um, uh, I think they are some things to look at, especially if it takes you out of the movie. That's, that's not good. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think some of the tonal things, some of the relationship things. Oh, the other thing that bothers me is Rey's too damn good as a Jedi. Like, she's a natural. Yeah. And, and she didn't even train and just like as martial artists, you know, we're all pissed by that. Cause we're like, dude, for her, you know, she's had year, months and months, maybe years of training for this role. You know, she's probably working with a lot of stunt choreographers and fight choreographers, you know? So I, this is my thinking as a director. This is me as a director thinking, I have to at least show a, a glimpse into the training that the actual actor has to do for that role. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, because because we watch her from zero to like a hundred in like one and a half movies, you know, she's able to take down Luke Skywalker. I'm like, whoa, what's um, and she's yeah. So that's a one issue. Um, okay, uh, any last thoughts on Last Jedi, or should we move on to Blade Runner? Well, uh, yeah, one last um, story plot. The the whole Canto bites scene was completely unnecessary I thought it Didn't led really to help. led to nothing it was fruitless right and i here here's some of the reddit comments basically maybe that's what so the empire strikes back right yeah a lot of a lot of fruitless things happen eventually you know han solo gets taken away and you know spoiler if you haven't seen empire strikes back i mean hopefully you have by now um a lot of downers in that movie, right? Um, and uh, I think this film, in some way, might be kind of realistic in the sense that, yeah, the whole Canto bite scene, there's no payoff. The only payoff is they release those animals, I guess. And they inspire those kids. And I, I guess the kid does a force pull with the broom. I, I didn't catch that the first time. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. So this film is kind of like a populist film, basically, right? Saying, well, two things. One is saying that anyone can be, anyone can use the force, because I guess Ray's parents are what, just nobodies, nerf herders. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then two, um, yeah, sometimes, uh, y you know, idealistic. That's same with Poe's character. Idealism has to come headfirst with realism, and like, guess what? Sometimes idealism is going to get shut down. So maybe maybe that's a message. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it did. There was no payoff. It was not satisfying, really. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, this is starring Ryan Gosling. Uh, spoiler: Harrison Ford's in it. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's also uh, what's his name, James Allsman. Uh, anyways, yeah. Cool. There's a. Yeah, uh, why don't you start this one, Dan? Go for it. Uh, I, um, I didn't see it in theaters. I saw it at home, and a lot of people were talking about. Uh, there, there were like the main issues I heard about, at least, was that it, the future was a little bit too um, monochrome, meaning it's very white. There are no minorities that we could see. And the second part was that uh, it was too long, and you know if you address both, think if we both if we address both things separately, the the first part where it's like very white, it's very true. However, there's a lot of Asian symbols. There's like um, Korean words and Japanese words and things like that. But it definitely was very white. I, I didn't see any minorities. Whereas in the very first one, uh, other than Edward James Olmos, who was in both movies. Um, there was some Asians eating ramen and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, there was I, one I, old Asian guy eating ramen in, in 2049. I saw, so but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but overall, it's very white. Even like uh, the replicants were all white, so maybe that's the future that we should expect that um, the white people are gonna be completely taking over and <laughs> like replicants only white people. <laughs> Maybe that's the only way way uh, white people can survive. Maybe because like, because mm. I mean, in real life, I mean, the minorities are going to take over in America at least are going to take over uh, the majority. Uh, probably, I think by twenty forty nine, maybe actually. <laughs> um, okay, so those are so. Wait, 
so do you, you agree with those grievances it bothered you or you're mm-hmm. like not too much is you're okay with those um i, I guess uh the but monochrome thing it, it's a slight hindrance but it, it didn't really bother me as far as like enjoying the movie is concerned the length of the movie was more of an issue but and you could see that it could have been tightened up a little bit here and there overall it was beautifully shot so it, it didn't distract me. i could see why dennis did it dennis Vinilo, villeneuve the director yeah and it felt good because you could i i thought his whole thought process was out there on the screen for you to see. Mm. <clears throat> I uh, enjoyed the film. I, I, I really like this director. He did a, a film called Polytechnic. It's like a, a film about uh, a shooting that happened in uh, Canada about this guy who tar- targeted women because he felt that women were the cause of his failure in society, uh, the shooter. Uh, he he's like unemployed and depressed. Anyways, um, really good film. He also did Arrival. Denise, uh, I think I don't know if it's pronounced Denny. I know, but uh, he also did Arrival, which I enjoyed uh, as a film as well. Uh, this film, Blade Runner, uh, I enjoyed also for that kind of that pacing, right? That that you like. I like what you said. That, that having that thought process, I agree with that. It's kind of like you can see how the you know even those you know like in drive right just you put the camera on ryan gosling and you just have him think and it's pretty captivating so same with this film him him as a replicant you know just watching him think and process things was fairly uh, engaging especially when there's that dream spoiler where he goes to the dream maker right and he just sits there with that where she says that's a real dream And, and he just sits there and then boom, he explodes, right? Emotionally, he like throws the table over. Like that, that, kind, that those were like some powerful scenes. Um, plot hole uh, is like, wait, how, how was she able to insert her real memory into him? You know, like that, I don't quite get because it's illegal to use real memories in replicants. So maybe. Right she she sabotaged or she was maybe that maybe it was an experiment with him or maybe it was like part of the hack team i think we discussed this but maybe the team that was a part of hacking and switching the information that led to harrison ford's daughter um uh because i bet i guess ryan gosling thought that he was harrison ford's son and that's what i was thought but there was kind of like a bait and switch and it's not uh, that was a little bit confusing for me, uh, to be honest. So that's one thing I had an issue with. Uh, the other issue I have with the film is uh, some, yes, the monochromeness of the, basically the use of Asian culture without the use of Asians. Now, the uh, the her character, the basically the hologram character, she's very Asian. She wears like the the Chung Sam, right? The, yeah. the, the the Chinese dress and uh, also but she's extreme so the thing is that and then also the prostitute replicant is does something similar and she's white as well now I thought to myself if these women were if these women were Asian would that make me even ha- make me make me happier I don't know man like if these women were Asian, I would just be like, "Oh man, they're totally hypersexualizing Asian women again, right?" Right. And and then I realized, wait, they're just hypersexualizing women, you know, in a in this film, and it's uh, there are, I guess there's the Robin Wright character, and she she comes on to like Ryan Gosling a little bit, and that's you know, I, I guess I I would understand that. You know, because I guess Ryan Gosling is an attractive replicant or whatever. Um, so in her eyes, he could be seen as an object. Um, so I guess I can kind of get that. But her character was, I thought, fairly weak as well. She just kind of died, like super right. without a fight, you know. And this is like Wonder Woman, Robin Wright, you know. And like I, I, I mean, and, you know, it's just, they're separate movies. But I thought in the film Blade Runner, she did seem strong-headed. She would have put up a bigger fight, I thought. 
Um, and also the main villain agent, the uh, adversary agent, as they would say, is that kind of like Asian looking woman as well. And I think in, I was reading in IMDb that she had her hair up a little bit and the makeup in a way that she looked more Japanese, right? Uh-huh. And she did look kind of like sty- stylized as, as Asian, but she's white. The... Um, that the killing a replicant girl yeah right love love <laughs> yeah love. love she love kills right yeah so um these are some of my grievances with the film the representation of women the represent the lack of representation of, of of race um but as a film as itself uh I, the, some of the moments of emotional uh, you know holding the gaze um kind of that that quiet ending of him dying you know there's some some beautiful moments um that struck and some scenery but uh but yeah there it's not it's not a perfect film that's for sure yeah 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 any any other thoughts on 2049 or blade runner no i i just uh i i, th- I enjoyed it more than i thought i would yeah and I, I i didn't i didn't mind the the length that much uh the other thing i thought was i thought harrison ford's character was a little bit uh a little bit pa- super passive i uh, i guess I, maybe I wanted some more from his from from his character, Decker. He he just seemed like a victim of circumstance, you know. Yeah. And uh, I guess I, I felt I wanted a little bit more agency from his character, but yeah. Okay, uh, Lady Bird. Yeah, I I I, uh, I didn't know what to expect from Lady Bird. I I came into this film. I went to watch it uh, in uh, shout out to Shattuck Cinema in Berkeley. I watched it in Shattuck with my 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 home girl there, and uh, yeah, I, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. Uh, it reminded me of Rushmore. Have you seen Rushmore? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's a Rushmore poster <laughs> in the film. So, and I think Greta Gerwig is what around my age, maybe or yeah, she's about thirty-two. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I for me, Wes Anderson come was coming up while we were in high school or middle school and like we saw i remember seeing rushmore and then eventually bottle rocket and just like wow this is like a cool quirky way to make films right yeah and and i think this film is a callback to that sort of really dry wit um teenage angst um intelligent humor sort of uh and family family drama that i kind of miss from like the earlier Anderson stuff and Royal Tenenbaums, you know. So I thought Greta Gerwig did a good job, uh, and I felt that uh, Cherche, uh Ronan, or Sersa, I it's either Sir Cherche or Sersa, uh Ronan, the main character, Lady Bird. She did a really good job. Um, one one grievance that I do have is that <laughs> she's not she's not Californian. She she did she was born in New York, <coughs> but <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> but she uh, she was raised in Ireland, so she still has an Irish. You know, she's she considers you know she's Irish pl- slash American. But uh, I she I, I think identity wise, she's mainly I- Irish because she grew she was raised there as, as, as most of her uh, childhood. So from what my research of, uh, of about her, so. I was a little bit like, oh man, this is like a really Sacramento, California girl. It would be cool. It would be cool if she was played by, you know, in an ideal world and a Sacramento actor, but <laughs> uh, that'd be tough. So maybe a Californian actor, because there, there's just some, there's some very Californian things in that film that, especially Bay Area, uh, North, Northern California things that I just feel would ring truer if it's coming from that kind of uh, an actor with a similar background, but. Uh, regardless, I, th- I thought she did a good, strong performance. Um, but yeah, Dan, any, any thoughts on that? Or uh, <clears throat> I thought the movie was a little overhyped. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But uh, I, I didn't think I enjoyed it quite as much as everyone else who watched it before me did. Yeah. So it, it was, everyone was saying that... Uh, I was listening to some other podcast talking about it, and he said that it was one of the films that once it ended, he still wanted to keep on going. I don't know. I necessarily felt that way. I felt it could have been a, a TV series because you can totally talk about her life adjusting to New York. 
from California. Yeah. And that could, could keep on going for another, like, two hours, maybe. But um, overall, I just, I enjoyed it, but not as much as I thought uh, I would enjoy, uh, as I enjoyed some of the other nominated movies this year. It, I, I, I have to agree uh, with you in the sense that um, I think I was lucky that in that I didn't really hear too much hype going into that film. I just knew that I heard it was good a film and, and I saw the trailer. It seemed funny, you know, so I, I went in fairly blank slate. Um, but there is there was a certain emptiness I did feel in that what's what's her what's she trying to do you know like what's her deal right what's lady bird's deal so the film i would say like greta girl where i watched the interview she said that the film is kind of like a love letter uh it's like kind of like a love story between a mother and daughter and how this push and pull uh, relationship works out and i think that i think that's great because there's a lot of films about father son relationships uh, but I think uh, a mother daughter relationships are is a good place to explore more. So that that was done well. Now, but her as a character, and also kind of like some of the coldness the mother exhibited towards the daughter towards the end. I don't know if it made too much emotional sense in the sense that, yeah, your daughter just got into a really good college, and you're maybe because because we're Asian, we'll be like, dude. <laughs> What the hell? Why is she mad at that? Her daughter got into a great college, you know? Uh, I guess it's the more of her lying to the mom, I guess. Uh, and also, like, yeah, what's, what's this, what is this baggage that Lady Bird's trying, what is she trying to prove by, like, ditching her old friend and getting the new friend? Like, I guess her main goal is to get out of Sacramento, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's, so if we look at the film, like, structurally, so the goal her goal as a as a protagonist is to get to college, and generally you from A to B. Like how how do the other kind of events you know fit along that line? And the film sort of kind of like just does does a lot of different tangents, you know, with the boys and stuff like that, which were entertaining. But at times I was a little bit like, wait, what's this film trying to? I guess what's this film trying to eventually get to or say? I guess you know. Um, which I hate saying because it's kind of like a film doesn't have to say a, a specific thing, but I do feel that there has to be a specific, th- you know, uh, underlying tone or um, thematic narrative that is being pushed forward. Um, so I think the mother and daughter one's shown out, but then other times the film kind of meandered and I got a little bit, you know, sidetracked. But overall, I, I didn't mind it. They were pleasurable sidetracks but uh it was it was a good film i wouldn't say great but it was good and i like the rushmore feel to it yeah uh, any other other things to add about that film or no i i i think uh that's pretty much it it's some I, I don't have much more to add to that one did you did you like the performances <clears throat> i did um i didn't find it as distracting that Sersha's uh Irish, for the most part. <laughs> That's me being like a, a nationalist, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, immigrants are definitely taking our superhero jobs for the most part. Yeah, seriously. Uh, you mean white immigrants or yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all all these Australians and and in British. English, British, uh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, are taking over uh, all these jobs. But yeah, well, okay. Uh, so, uh, okay, so that's the end of our Cinema Corner. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do another Cinema Corner in the next podcast. Uh, moving on, uh, so, yeah, I was in Taiwan. So, uh, since the last podcast, last podcast I was in Korea, before that I was living, I was in Taiwan for a, a good couple of weeks, and then I was in Korea for a week, and I was back in the U.S. for the holidays, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I have some notes here, but yeah, did you have any questions, Dan? Or, or no, you know? we should uh, we should cover your your travels these days. Yeah, so I so here's what happened. I, I went back to Taiwan to do some pre production on a short film, 
Uh, tentatively, it's called Grandma's Journey. It's about a grandma who has to pull her uh, American-born grandson out of a Taipei prison. She has to travel from a rural Ty uh, Taiwan, Taiwan town, Taiwanese town, to Taipei, pull her grandson out of prison. Uh, so before he gets deported by this xenophobic um, Taiwanese police officer. Um, the grandson is th well, thrown into jail because he's allegedly teaching kindergarten students uh, English, which is illegal. Uh, and he's doing it without work permit, and also he's doing it um, as, an, as an alien because he only has an American passport. Uh, so anyways... That's where I was in Taiwan for. I, I, so I met with some casting agencies, or I met with a casting agency and some actors and some production uh, folks there. And like real talk, yeah, I had a lot of anxiety going, because uh, to be honest, I had some idea what I wanted to do when I went to Taiwan, uh, but uh, I wasn't really clear on how I was going to get it done because uh, I the contacts that I have in Taiwan are like, you know, minimal, right? I do have some, and but the, it's like, it will, I had to renew those uh, connections and relationships and also make new ones. So I was, uh, it, I had a lot of anxiety going in, but it it was pretty fun actually. I uh, I met up with my my DP uh, Richard Sue and. Uh, he helped. We felt we did some location scouting, and uh, in Lukang, so I filmed. We filmed some some shots there, some B roll there, as well as in Taipei, and also in this uh, Bushi Ban, which is like a cram school in near uh, Siling area. So that was good. Um, and like we had this gear, right? So we had this gear I uh, borrowed from our good friend James Fang. Shout out to James Fang, and uh, he helped us a lot and. We also, I was like, you know what? Hey, Richard, I kind of want to shoot a short film with this gear that we already have as well. We were using it to shoot these locations. But I was like, wait, it'd be cool to shoot like a short film. And I had like this really short film idea, um, like four pages, five pages. And I was just like, uh, in my heart, I was thinking, oh man, maybe it's really last minute. I don't know any other actors that would be down. It's like a kind of like guy, girl. And then two guys, friends, kind of short film. Um, and I ran. I was like, you know what? Here, let me just give it a try. So I messaged a actor friend that I never met before, but who messaged me saying that she uh, goes back and forth between LA and Taiwan is interested in my work. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh, was, let me give it a long shot. So I messaged her and say, hey. Uh, Exactly. <laughs> you're, you said you're in Taiwan. Uh, did you want to act tomorrow night? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So um, the, film, uh, t the film is loosely based on a... Um, so that, that short film I, that I, I wrote up that night, um, I'm editing that now as well. So that was really fun. We shot that in, in like six hours. We were in Sada. It's basically like a kind of like, kind of the feel of like before sunrise, before sunset, and it's a little bit um, uh, kind of loosely based on my personal experience of going back to Taiwan a couple of years ago and meeting up with my ex girlfriend and having a closure with with her and talking about our our why we broke up and stuff like that, and um, and also and then I James Fang acted in one section of it where it's kind of like me talking to him about. Yeah, just about where we're at, like relationship-wise, and his character uh, getting married. So, uh, and that's kind of loosely based on a, a, a mutual friend of ours who who just got married. So, um, that was really fun. So, okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like real talk, Daniel. Like uh, the first the first week, though. So that's like the second, third week I was able to get these things done. But and uh, and Richard happened to be there visiting family, so that I timed it all right. But the first week I was just kind of lost in just travel fatigue, like the long flight, and also the weather was like kind of muggy there, and I just felt like kind of depressed for the first week. And 
it was uh it was kind of tough but i did some like hoffman process exercises if you if, yeah you know from that last podcast but so i did some of those like recycling exercises and those helped and also i think i needed to exercise more like it's real easy not to exercise when you travel because you're like oh i'm traveling i don't need to exercise but i really do because if i don't like a lot of um i just feel like like blah you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of it. I mean, yeah. What was the highlight of your trip? <laughs> <coughs> All right, let's talk about dating then. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, the, the, those were some good professional highlights that I mentioned, like making that short film, that short, short film, and then working on the bigger short uh, grandma's journey, and then, and also able to make time for that shorter, shorter film, uh, Letting the words go. That's the tentative title. Um, highlight of trip was probably going to Korea. Um, but I, there's one thing I want to say about Taiwan, though. Um, I was <laughs> I, I wanted to go to a hot springs in Shinbeito, right? That's where it's famous for its hot springs. And uh, so I booked a I booked a hot spring. I guess I had to book a room for two hours. Um, I thought it was going to be like an outdoor spring, but they're like, oh no, it's inside. I, I later found out there were some outdoor springs that were much cheaper, like further down the road, but I just, whatever. So I booked it and I was like, oh, whoa, this is like a, like a love hotel. <laughs> 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 it's basically a, a room and there's a hot, there's a, um, a stone ba- uh, bath in the, in the bathroom that you can use as a hot, that has a direct hot springs connection, right? And uh, I was just like, oh man, dude, I'm feeling kind of lonely. <laughs> so I, I in the, so I'm like naked in the bedroom and I'm like uh, I'm like okay well let me turn on and okay I know I'm like a so I told you before like I'm kind of an addict right for online dating right yeah so I was just like well I'm curious what's it like in Taiwan so I turned on my, I, I reactivated my coffee meets bagel and tinder account and uh, starts you know started swiping and uh it was uh it's kind of ridiculous like the the amount of attention as an asian male especially asian american male in asia is much higher in taiwan and also korea than it is in the u.s so for numbers uh so tinder generally uh i have maybe on average maybe 20 women that are that have liked me on tinder and are awaiting my like right uh, and then whereas in asia there's a it shows up like oh there's 99 plus women that have liked you back and are awaiting you to like them back so it's like four t- four plus times the amount of women who like me back in while while i was in asia so that's just some like so, like, I get it. I get it why a lot of Asian Americans go back to Asia. <laughs> like, uh, if, if they like, you know, if they, uh, you know, they, they uh, have a preference for Asian women and Asian culture, dude, they're going to, there's so much, there's more opportunities. More opportunities of women, you know. Sure, you know, there's women of other races and Asian, you know, there's women here that like me. I, I like I told you, I went, I've been on 60 plus dates, but dude, if I wasn't living in Taiwan and in Korea, this whole like sexual drought thing would not be a problem for me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, highlight in Taiwan was that uh, I did, I. I did uh, approach two women. Um, one was a, a woman, uh, and she was like working a art artist cultural, um, st- like she was selling like art art artisan products, like like you know. And she seemed kind of cute. She we, she caught my eye, so I went over and I was like, oh, this is kind of cute, and we chatted up, and I got, and then she's like, oh yeah, oh you're from America, and we just yeah that was. Th- I got her Instagram and her line and we chatted but it's funny though when I try to set up the date later like a week later she's like oh I actually got a boyfriend the last couple of days um, 
<laughs> uh, so if you want to get tea, we can get tea as friends. And I said, uh, to be honest, I, I think you're really cute. And I think it might be a little bit uh, awkward if we met up. Yeah. And she thought that was kind of cute and said, she laughed and said, oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll connect on Instagram. Um, okay. Another, she's Taiwanese, Taiwanese. I spoke Mandarin there. And then this other, I saw this, um, this girl, like uh, this, this, this woman, uh, she was eating a red bean bun. Okay. And okay. I just thought like, wow, the way she's eating this red bean bun is so damn adorable. Right. And she kind of, she also had her feet kind of like turned in a little bit. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like, like an anime or something. And, um, and I was just like, so we're walking across the street. She's behind me. And I'm like, okay, damn it. How, how's, how does this work? You know, how does this work in Asia? Is it different in Asia than it is America? Like picking up or talking to women? And uh, <laughs> I remember talking to my Taiwanese friend. I asked him this question. He's like, why not? Just ask. Yeah, you're just friendly. And I was like, okay, you're right. Right. And anyways, um, so we're walking across the street. And I, I, and I know she's behind me. So... We when we get to the other side, I turn around and I say, "Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, 你好, uh, 你知道那个 blah blah blah, 哪个站在哪里? So, what, what, do you know where the station is?" And then she starts speaking, and I, I looked at her, and I knew, I thought maybe that she's not Taiwanese, Taiwanese. And then when she spoke, she spoke in a very, she spoke in an accented uh, uh, Mandarin. Oh, 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 是在 and then I could tell from the accent, Japanese, 100%. Uh -huh. And I say, Ho, oh, are you from uh, Nihonjin desu ka? And she's like, Oh, Nihonjin desu. You know, I, I am Japanese, right? Yeah. And then I'm like, Oh, yeah, cool. And we start chatting up. So she's learning Mandarin in Taiwan. And uh, her Mandarin was really good. Like for only like, you know, whatever couple months she was there, her, she had picked it up really quick. So we spoke Mandarin because my Japanese is like terrible. So... Um, we spoke Mandarin and uh, yeah, we hit it off. And you know what? I could have done like, uh, you know, in the game they call something like the instant date or I was kind of feeling it out. And I, I think maybe I could have like, I could have probably asked her like, oh, hey, did you want to hang out now? But I, I kind of shied away from it. I didn't want to be too needy or too forward. Um, so I got her line and we set up a date after I came back from Korea. And it was one of the best, to be honest, Daniel, it was like one of the best dates I've ever had because uh, we were just, you know, it was really weird. It's like we just met on the street and asking directions and we talked about, I, I sent her my website. We were chatting online. She saw some of my films. And uh, so we are strangers, right? And yeah. I, when I saw her, we, I did this like kind of awkward hug because I don't know if Japanese people hug or not. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Yeah, yeah, they don't. So when I went, reached for a hug, she was like, uh, she didn't know what to do. So she kind of just like patted me. But then, um, but then we started, we went to a coffee shop and we started talking. And yeah, we really hit it off. We started talking about, and, and this is going to be leading into the, I have a Japanese phrase today for language corner. And we okay. started talking about being present. Like, um, so her story was that she's kind of, she wasn't that great of a college student. So, but she went to, she wanted to go to, she wanted to learn Chinese. She came to Taiwan and it became like her passion, you know? Yeah. So like based on her, her speaking level, conversational level with me, I was super surprised. Like she probably in, you know, half a year was, was she was probably at the speaking level. I was the first year of, you know, you know, uh, and I've been, I went to Chinese school as a kid too. Though, so, but my first year in Taiwan, she's probably around that level and six months in, you know, yeah. without, I think that much. Um, so, so it was interesting. Cause I, I mentioned to her like, well, you know, we talked to this other, I talked to this other actor, Teo, right. And so he, it seemed that he took naturally to acting. And for her, she was saying how she took naturally to language learning in Mandarin. And, uh, and she asked me, was that something similar to, to how I felt with like act, acting and the arts? And I, w I would say so too, you know, it's something I always knew since a young age that I would, I wanted to do something in the arts. Uh, I wasn't sure yet what it was, but I knew I didn't want to do a, you know, I don't know, like a, a job as a bank teller or something like that. You know, I, I wanted something more creative or, you know, 
So anyways, good conversation. And, and, and I talked to my, my Hoffman process teacher about it. We had like a, a therapy talk, a follow-up uh, after the process. And I mentioned this to her and she was like, and I, and she's like, Oh, that's good. And I, I told her like, why, why do you think she asked me why she, uh, I felt that interaction with that particular woman was, you know, more fulfilling than maybe my past frustrating experiences before. And, and I think it, it's because I coming into it, I was focusing on connecting to her as a, a person, as, as a, as a, uh, 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 yeah, sorry, that's a terrible. <laughs> yeah, women are people too, right? But <laughs> to, to, to connect to her uh, uh, mentally, emotionally first, instead of trying to push for a, a physical connection right away. And I think that was very important. That kind of mindset coming in of just like, I'm not gonna push for any sort of like, you know, touchy feel. I, I'm pushing to get to know her first, right? And I think that really helped with, um, yeah, in basically take, I told you before, my ther- like therapist I talked to was to don't have sex on the first date and kind of lift that kind of burden off of your, just focus on connecting. And I think that's why I had more fun because sex was like the furthest, furthest thing from my mind at the moment. I was more interested in figuring out who this person was. And what, what she's all about and yeah I was attracted to her I mean that's the only you know the reason why I spoke to her but um, uh, that's something maybe when I go back to Taiwan I do want to s- see if she s- still wants to hang out And but it's it's really tough you know it's like she's from Japan and I'm in America and I'm only in Taiwan like a couple times for this film so but the thing is remember we talked to Teo about uh, Eckhart Tolle right and uh, he wrote this book called The Power of Now. I was, I was watching some of his talks, and it's just like, well, that's, that's the, those are concerns for the future. What, what can I experience and make myself happy now, right? Yeah. And that's uh, and similar to the, my therapist saying, uh, well, you can be happy now. It's like, that's the only important question. It's like, in this moment, what, 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 what can make this moment you know, better and stronger. There's a time for planning. There's a time for looking forward to the future. But what? How? How about now in this moment, when talking to her? You know, how can I connect to this person and just have fun in that moment because that's a beautiful moment you have. And um, they reminded me of Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut, where like there's these um, these uh, these aliens, right? They they don't live in the they don't they don't uh, they they process time in a different way. They go back and forth the past and the future and right. like basically they're always present in a moment but it's some random spot in the timeline and I think that's kind of interesting because basically all they can do is be happy in that whatever timeline moment they are present in or be present in that moment so anyways yeah any any thoughts questions <laughs> yeah I, I kind of agree with that I mean you're at you're at an age where uh, you're at not an age, but you're definitely in a situation where you shouldn't worry about the future so much in terms of like planning out. Oh, what if uh, what if things go well, but I can't see her and things like that. I just I used to do that a lot, and I probably still do it. So it's just it doesn't seem very healthy in the end. You're gonna it's just about regrets at that point. Yeah, and you know, remember our talk with Byron, right? <clears throat> like he met his girl in like a travel in South America. Now he's in Germany with her. So, um, yeah, you never know how things might turn out, you know. And so, it's because of because the future is unknown. Yeah, don't don't stress. I guess I I don't have to stress too much about it. Yeah. Because things will work out the way they will work out, yeah. Um, so okay, Korea. So th- I went to Korea and um, super cold there. By the way, like I went in December and it's just really cold. Uh, really, it was it was like one of the fun. It was really fun though because I've never been to Korea. I've been to Japan like years ago, but Korea was cool and. I am. I don't speak. I don't speak Korean. Um, I know like a few phrases, but 
I got to meet up with Sang. Actually, Sang was uh, in Korea. Him and because his, his wife is a, a artist in resident there, so I met up with him, with with him, uh, you know, from our one of our previous guests here, and um, that was really cool. So uh, we we got to hang out. We ate Korean barbecue, um, but a lot of other times I was just hanging out by myself, checking out the sites. So I had this ginger. Have you ever had um, ginger chicken soup, where it's like the ginger is inside the whole chicken or half a chicken? No, and you break it open. There's ginger and stuffing inside the chicken. Yeah, um, it was it was all right. I I I needed it, especially since it was so cold there. And I was eating there uh, at this famous restaurant. Um, and, and by the way, I stayed at three different Airbnbs. Uh, I would only recommend that if you have good transportation or you, you're willing to pay for a taxi to go to each spot. I didn't. I I used public transport, and that was kind of a pain. But I did like living in three different areas of Seoul. Um, so anyways, in the second area, I was living near uh, that restaurant. And I was eating in this restaurant with the ginger chicken soup. And I was looking across the table. And there was this gorgeous woman sitting the table over, right? And I just I was like, damn it. I need to contain myself stop staring <laughs> so i just start eating but she's with like a group of friends right so i'm enjoying the soup and then i i finish and i'm, I'm leaving and i'm, I'm standing there's like oh, dang it should i and i really wanted to go talk to her but it's such an awkward position because like the way the tables are set up it's like low tables everyone's just sitting on the ground and she's with friends and there's some other guests near by their group so I was thinking, and I was like, I took out my notepad and I wrote down my Kakao Talk. Uh, so Kakao Talk is the messaging system they use in Korea, kind of like Line or Facebook Messenger, right? Right. And I, I wrote it down, and I was just like, Ugh. so so uh, backtrack a little bit. On my way to Korea, on the flight to Korea, there was a attractive um, flight attendant that was at not on the plane, but at the at the counter. And I was really tempted to like just pass my 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 um, my uh, username to her. But uh, when I went to go, when I no, I had the nerve to go do it, <laughs> this her like one of her her, her um, older lady uh, coworkers came up to me. Like, Can I help you, sir? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm all right. And I turned away <laughs> and I and then I I just I went back. I went onto the plane. This is like on the way to boarding. So it's like a really it's a security sensitive area so anyways so i had this kind of like this regret in my heart somewhere and i was like okay let me just do it this time so i went up to the it was ridiculous i almost threw up i went up to these this group of women and i i, I sat close to them and i said oh hi and they look at me like what the f who the fuck is this guy right <laughs> and, and and then the the, the my my I uh, guess you know the girl that I'm in, in, attracted to I look at her and say oh hey I just wanted to say um, sorry what, uh, uh, English Korean Chinese and they uh, she said uh, English because <laughs> I wasn't sure what language they spoke and then um, and uh, I said hey I think you're really pretty and I just want to give you my Kakao talk. Um, uh, username if that's okay and she's like uh, okay and she like took out her hand and she and I gave her my my uh, notepad thing and I said all right well sorry to interrupt your guys conversation um thank you bye <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah because the feeling I was getting I I, I wasn't sure uh, oh, I, I did say, oh, you guys traveling? They're like, oh, yeah, we're traveling. And then I could sense that they didn't really want me to sit, stay. So I just left and said thank you and left. Uh, so I didn't I didn't get a message from her, unfortunately. But I think it's okay. I think the most important thing was that I was able to... It was like this one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. Um, but I did it. And I'm kind of proud of myself for doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so because I wasn't I wasn't being offensive or like too, you know, like creepy or anything, but yeah, um, I don't think I was. Uh, okay, so anyways, flash forward. Uh, yeah, so any thoughts there, or I can go to. I have some other hit um, <laughs> pickup stories, but yeah. No, let's let's do it. Okay, okay. So another pickup story was. Um, 
uh, I'm in the restaurant, right? Oh my god, I'm terrible. I'm always asking for directions. So I'm in this restaurant. So I see this. Uh, there's some seats, but there's an attractive lady sitting in the corner. So you know, I'm so, yeah, I sit next to her, <laughs> and uh, she's like working on some sort of design stuff, right? And and I'm I get my you know we I have ordered my food. We're sitting down, and we're waiting for our food, and um, I. I kind of know where I'm, I want to go to the palace. I want to do like the palace tour that day, right? Right. And I kind of already know where it is based on Google Maps. But I was like, you know what? This might be a good excuse to double check, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I asked her, hey, do you know how to get to this palace, Gyeongbokgung, right? Oh, no, no, not the Gyeongbokgung, but like a, the, the one next to it. There's like a Chung, Chung, um, I forget the name. But uh, she's like, oh, and then I, uh, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, what? I, I'm not too sure. Her English wasn't really good, right? So I, I, I put into Google Translate, oh, I'm looking for directions here. She's like, oh, okay. Oh, um, and she looked on her phone and she gave me some like very, like she gave me some direction, but it was in Korean. She's like, oh, do you understand? She's like, oh, uh, Ungook Station, right? You should go to this station. I'm like okay, and then uh, she said uh, walk, and and she paused and she didn't know how to explain it, right? And she, I said, oh, don't worry about it, it's okay. All right, so I think the conversation's over, right? So we get our food, and I'm eating, and she she gets her food too, but she's not eating, and I'm eating, and I'm like, is she checking? And I have this hypothesis, maybe she's still looking up directions for me, maybe. And I look over, she is. She's on her phone and she's writing down this on, on a piece of paper detailed directions and she's translating it from Korean into English, right? Yeah. And uh, this, so she hasn't been eating for the past five minutes with her food just standing like getting cold in front of her. So I, I look over. So I let <laughs> this is me. I let her write for a little bit, right? And then I, I look over to her. Hey, you know, are you getting directions? Dude, you don't have to get directions for me. It's okay, you know? I, I, I kind of like do the motion with my hand, right? And she's like, no, it's, o- it's okay. And then, th- th- this is interesting. I think, I don't know if this is a Korean thing because I noticed this happened to me t- another time with a, a guy. Um, I was at a, a music cafe and I, I said, hey, yeah. We started chat- I started chatting with the, the bartender, uh, the music DJ guy, and he, uh, he said, oh, you're from California? Yeah, I'm California Beach Boys, right? He's like, oh, okay. And he walks away. And I think the conversation's over, right? And then he comes back, he gives, shows me a CD of the Beach Boys. It, it, I guess it's kind of like, I, I, I don't know how to uh, say it. It's like being helpful on the down low. I don't know if that's a, th- does that make sense? It's like you think the conversation's over, right? And, yeah. But then they'll come back and help you like, oh. It's like they didn't even want to show you that they were doing work. Because I think in America sometimes there's like a lot of showing, right? Like, oh, look how hard I'm working for you, right? Whereas in Korea, like in these two instances, like they're like doing all this work and not seeking for me to see, but for for me to like um, to give me the information at the end. So, anyways, she gives me the information, and I'm like, "Oh wow, you're so th- so so helpful." Um, are you, and then I translate it into my Google Translate. Are you a designer? And she looked at me like, "Huh? How did you know?" And we were talking through Google Translate. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, I saw you working on some designs earlier. And I said I did some film, and she was real interested. And like, I was like, oh, damn, this girl's cool, you know? But the language barrier is, like, it's really hot, tough, right? Yeah. And then um, so we're leaving together, and I wasn't sure if she wanted – I told her, hey, we should get a drink sometime in Google Translate. And she looked at it, and she laughed. And, she, and then she translated to me, if you need, ever need help, let me know. I'm like, okay. So we're leaving together, and I'm thinking, wait, does she want to leave with me now or later? I wasn't sure. Um, so I go one way, and she stops, and I look at her. I was like, wait, does she want me to go with her? Or like, I, I'm such, you know, Dan, I'm kind of dumb. I, I just wave at her like a goodbye wave. <laughs> <laughs> and she like waves at me, and then she leaves. And then I leave, and I realized, guess what happened? I was going the wrong direction. <laughs> I was supposed to go the same direction as her to the train station to go to the palace. Um, anyways, uh, eventually I texted her and said, hey, I got to the palace. She's like, oh, I'm so proud of you. 
and then I try to set up a date with her and she's like oh I'm sorry I'm I'm busy all year cannot drink I will miss my chance to get drink with handsome guy right and I was like oh damn you know during our conversation with our Google Translate she said she she did mention like she, she saw my Facebook photo and she's like wow uh, you're you look better in person I was like damn okay I, I really thought this was gonna go somewhere right and I set up a, I try to set up another day but um, it didn't work out she said oh I'm busy and I try to say oh well if you're not too busy for drink maybe we can just I don't know do like a study break uh, I'm trying to what did I say I uh, maybe I can uh, maybe go to a coffee shop or something and she didn't respond so anyways um, so that was the other pickup story. <laughs> uh, and, and this other thing, oh, this other cool thing happened. Probably the, the highlight of my trip was, um, okay, the third B Airbnb, right? So I'm traveling from Gyeongbokgung area to uh, this place south of the Han River uh, where my third Airbnb is. And my Airbnb host, she tells me, James, uh, there's going to be a party when you check in and we might not have finished until like 11 p.m. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, that's fine. And then that day I went hiking in Bukansan, which is like the, this, this very famous uh, mountain in Korea. And I did, I was, I did like a, I got kind of a lot. So it was kind of like a little bit of a repeat of Arkansas, right? <laughs> I got a little bit lost in, in it's a really awesome hike though. Um, I got a little bit lost in the mountain, but eventually I got out. It wasn't as bad, but um, uh, because like when it was, it got dark, but there were still people kind of like going down the road, and so I wasn't alone the whole time. Um, anyways, so I was checking into this third Airbnb. And I was getting, uh, I was like, oh, oh man, I don't know if I can really handle a party right now because I've been hiking all day, right? And uh, I hear like these like yelling. I'm like, oh damn it, that might be my Airbnb. So I walk. Sure enough, I walk to the house. It is, and there's a bunch of people hanging out. And <laughs> there's like so she, it's like an artist residence. So it's and they have a bunch of. So I go to my room that my and there's a bunch of little paintings on my bed. So I can't even lie down. And uh, I'm like. And the the host greets me and says, oh hey, you're James, right? And I look at her. Oh. She's kind of like a cute Korean girl, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of nice. Um, anyways, so I say, oh, yeah. And she's like, I'm so sorry. Uh, do you need a rest right now? I'm like, no, it's cool. I, I can I, I, I can hang out. And uh, so I hang out with them. And it was really cool. There was like a, one of the roommates was like a guy from San Diego. And I guess he's an exchange student. Uh, he's like Egyptian American. And then like... Uh, there's some some of her fr his friends were international students as well, so I talked to them a little bit. But I really wanted to talk to the local Korean artist people, right? And they were like around my age or a little younger. So I hang out with them downstairs, and it, it's it was really fun. Like, and but they were a little bit shocked that I don't drink. So Koreans they love the freaking drink, right? Yeah. And I told my host like, oh yeah, I don't drink beer. She like, what? <laughs> But uh, we, we had fried chicken, though. So I um, one of the guys was really cool. Uh, he ordered, like, um, it's kind of like Uber Eats. They ordered, He ordered fried chicken on his phone, and it came in. They de it was delivered. And, um, no, yeah, they, they it was, like, some cool paintings, and they were showing. And what was really cool is that there's, like, hey, James, you said you're a filmmaker? I'm like, yeah. So I actually showed our film, uh, Painting Hands. They had a projector set up, so they were showing some um, artsy uh, like uh, animation stuff, and then uh, they said, "James, yeah, let's put on your film." So I showed painting hands and some other my other stuff. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, that was really fun, and that was probably the highlight of my trip. Is like talking, so like yeah, just talking to these these uh, local Korean artists people. One guy, I guess he was like a famous baseball player in Korea. And he's trained in Taiwan before, so I kind of talked to him a little bit. And, <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, he said, like, oh, yeah, I'm bad at studying, but I'm good at baseball. So, <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, I talked to one girl. She was, like, she did research on gorillas in Indonesia. She wasn't an artist, but she was, like, a friend of an artist there. So that, that was, like, pretty, like, whoa, okay, that's really cool. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, now, sorry. So yeah, we should probably wrap it up soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. The last thing in Korea was that uh, I went to a bar club in Seoul, and uh, I was just like, because I know I was chatting to you, and I was chatting to my other friend. He said, "Oh yeah, you definitely have to ch- check out bar." So I was like. Oh, Fine. So Sunday night, I went to bar, but the, by the time I got there, it was almost like midnight, uh, just because I had a long. I was trying to. It was, I had a long day that day. I was doing a bunch of like touristy stuff, and then, um, but there was still some people, and there's some attractive. There was one girl sitting by herself, right? So I'm like, okay, James, just go say hi, right? So I go say hi. Hey, are you by yourself? And she's like, what? Are you? First of all, it's like, wait, English? Okay, are you talking to me? I'm like. Yeah, are you waiting for a friend? Or hi, how's it going? She's like, uh, cold, totally cold. And and then I say, uh, well, are you waiting for a friend? She's like, yeah. And then I'm like, and she goes back to looking at her phone, and I was like, okay, I walk away. So I was a little bit depressed for a few minutes. And then I chat up this other pair of women at the bar with me, and uh, there's one girl that was attractive um, that in that pair that I wanted to talk to. So I said, hey, how's it going? Are you guys from the area? And the girl that I was attracted to, like totally turned the other way. But her friend was like, "Oh yeah, we're we're from the area." She's like friendly, and I started talking to her. Oh cool, I'm from I'm visiting blah blah blah. And then I saw her friend is like completely like buries her head into her arm. I'm like, "Oh, is it cool if we talk?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm okay, but I think my friend and I." want to talk uh sorry or i'm I'm like no no it's okay i'm sorry and i so so rejection number two right so i go away and then there's this attractive pair i see so i wait uh I, I, by this time my, my confidence is kind of broken so i talk to the bartender it's like hey how do you talk to women in korea <laughs> <laughs> and the and he's like, oh, you know, hey man, just uh, you know, say how how are they doing? Just be nice, you know. Just uh, where are you from? You know, you say you're from, you know, basically. And he was just, yeah, he was just trying to build me up. So he was a nice guy. He was like, he was like the bar lead. Nice guy. I really like him. Um, so uh, so I eventually went up to the this uh, this third pair of women. And one, this one girl was like super attractive, and um, and they were the most receptive. They're like, "Oh, hey, you're traveling? Oh, cool. I like we work in I work in hospitality. She works in this. We, we start chatting it up, and I was like, "Oh, wow, this is great, right?" And then she's like, "Okay, yeah, but um, all right. Well, me and my friend have to talk." And I'm like, "Oh, cool. What do you guys need to talk about? I can, maybe I can answer some questions." She's like, "Um," and her friend uh, leaves, right? And then she's like, "No, I mean, we, we need to talk. We have some, a lot of personal stuff to talk about." I'm like, "Oh, without me." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, "Dang, it's really hard. It's I for me at least, it's kind of hard to to hit on pairs of women when you're by yourself because it's just like they kind of just want to talk to you." And I understand. I, I've I, I was talking. I, I've been in a similar situation where yeah, so. So I was like, okay, well, here, let me give you my cacao. I think I should have got hers, you know. Um, I was yeah. trying, I was trying something different. I was trying to give my number or give my ID to, to the person, but I think in that situation, she seemed willing to give me hers, but I, I gave her mine, and I maybe I couldn't take the rejection again, maybe. Um, so I left. And anyways, fast forward, I come back to the U.S. Right, I have a follow up call with my Hoffman teacher, and. Um, I, I recount some of uh, various versions of these stories to her, right? And she's like, James, it seems like and I also talk I also thought I also had a regret of maybe not asking my my Airbnb host out just for a drink or something. Like she was he, she seemed nice and seemed cute. But I, I would just I felt maybe I'd be overstepping and I didn't do it. Uh, anyways, I mentioned these kind of regrets and these kind of rejections to my, my teacher, and she said, "James, it seems like with all these women, you're posing them a question. Do you know what that question is?" You know, I was thinking to myself, uh, "Wait, is there 
what? What question? Um, so I thought about it, like really hard, and I was like, maybe if I'm attractive, maybe if I'm lovable. And she's like, yes. Well, guess what? You have to answer that for yourself, right? And we've talked about this a million times, and it's, I know it's my repetitive thought process. But I was like, yeah, I know. Yes, yes. And it's hard to understand that viscerally and just sit with that. And it wasn't until like this past winter break, um, this past Christmas, I, I found an uh, old passport of mine, right? And in my passport, I looked at some of the dates. It's like my baby picture. And I realized that before the age of five, I was in Taiwan for over like, I was in Taiwan for like a year, like six months here, six months there with my grandpa. And I realized like, oh, during the very formative years of my life, like between one and five, you know, I was away from my mother and my father, you know? And I think in some way, just looking at that, I might have a certain neediness because, yeah, because I was separated from my mother and my father at a very young age, you know? And sure, I had grandpa, and I, in our loved ones episode, I mentioned how much I love him, but he himself, he cannot replace a mother's love, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I think maybe that's a reason why I'm, that's why I reach out to women so much, or I seek women out so much for affection because uh, of that that void that I felt as a baby maybe um, that's me psychoanalyzing myself but looking at finding that passport was kind of a revelation to me you know so yeah yeah anyways we should wrap it up uh, any other thoughts or, uh, yeah. or yeah. any questions about my trip <laughs> and then Teo came over like uh, that one day right and that was really cool it was like uh, it it was it was so random to like it was so cool to hang out with him and chat with him because um, it it was a it's always good to like I think I guess here's what I'm thinking it's like because my mind is because of my issues with trying to seek attention from women it's always good to hang out with dudes you know like reconnect and yeah. like like with you with Teo, with uh, my friend Richard and, and James Fang, it's kind of like good to like reconnect with with men, men being men, right? Yeah. Uh, because I think that's really important. Um, and that's something that, that's talked about in No More Mr. Nice Guy, uh, that book, but yeah. Anyways, uh, okay. All right, should we go to the language corner or did you get anything else? No, but I don't actually have a language corner today. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll do I'll do one for both. I'll do two for both of us. Um, okay. <laughs> yay, language corner. Language um, corner. Yeah. Um, so the Japanese phrase today that I uh, that was that my the 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 lady that the girl I met in Taiwan, was, um, we were talking about uh, the concept of being present, right? And I, I mentioned that's something I'm working on. And she's like, oh, there's a phrase for that in Japanese. And we looked it up. It was like, uh, ima wa ima shikanai. So, ima wa ima shikanai. So, ima is like the character for like now or jing, right? Yeah. Like jing tian, the jin. And uh, so, it, it basically means there's only now, now. Like, that's like the literal translation, right? Um, another translation could be there's only this moment. Uh, I guess there's only, you know... Um, so, but I, uh, that's the phrase I learned. And I was just like, man, this girl's awesome. <laughs> if I was living in Taiwan, I would totally date her, you know? Yeah. Like that was so cool. Um, and, uh, so, or oh, this moment will never come again is I guess another, uh, way, or you only live once is another, um, uh, interpretation, but, uh, literal translation. I like the literal translation better. There's only now, now. Ima wa ima shikanai. Um, the Mandarin phrase, a similar Mandarin phrase would be Huo zai dang xia. Huo zai dang xia is a uh, huo, si, huo si live, right? Uh, huo means yeah. live. Zai is like now uh, or like here. And then dang, dang xia means present. So live in the present. Huo zai dang xia. 
is a, a similar Mandarin phrase. So um, that's something I've been working on. Basically, after the conversation with Teo and talking about the present, living the present moment, that's something, some research I've been doing. And you know what's crazy, Daniel? Sorry, I have to say this, but like uh, my friend in, in 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 Taiwan who helped me with like the like helped me with getting auditions and with the fil- the short film, uh, um, he, I, I talked to him about what he's been going through in his life, and he sent me a video of of the same guy, the same philosopher Eckhart Tolle, and, and I was just like, dude, you know, I, my Korean friend introduced me to this guy too. I've been watching his videos, and he's like, whoa. It's like it's a really crazy coincidence that he's kind of going through a similar, and he's like three years older than me, but we're going through a kind of similar spiritual, you know, process right now. So I thought that was pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, are you going through any spiritual processes right now, Daniel? Or <laughs> <laughs> none at all. <laughs> none at all. I mean, you know, you, no. You're you're being a you're living that. Well, yeah, it seems like you are fairly already in the moment, you know, from my my feeling about about you, I guess, yeah. And yeah, I, it, it's just uh, I. It's not so much a spiritual process. I'm just going through like more like a career process where I'm trying to discover what I really want to do next. Oh, yeah. And let, well, let's uh, let's save that for uh, next <laughs> next part. Yeah. Yeah, I I want to get into that. Sorry, I, I talked this whole podcast, but that's um, no. I think that's important. Okay, um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Let's uh, wrap it up. This is Young. I'm gonna be signing off. And this is Yin signing off. Cool. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Relationships getting you down.